this will be a short tutorial video that you can use when navigating the FAIR entry system and working on your entries for the 2022 State 4-H Horse and Pony Show. The very first thing that you should do is use the worksheet that is in the rule book and located on the 4-H Horse Program website. This entry form worksheet is laid out and follows exactly what you will see in the FAIR entry system in terms of the departments and the divisions and the classes that are available under each one of those. So please take time to work with your club leader, your trainer, your parent, before you ever enter the FAIR entry system, sit down with this worksheet, go ahead and fill it out for each horse or each of the horses that you plan to bring to the state show and complete it so it's ready to go when you go in and you enter the FAIR entry system. Now there are several different ways that we can enter the FAIR entry system. We have several different direct links on the website that you can use as well as in the rules or you can simply Google fairentry.com and it will take you to the FAIR entry homepage. You're then going to go to find your fare. If you look, this will give you every fare in every state in the United States that is currently using fare entry, every fare or show. We're going to, whoops, not Utah. We're going to narrow this down and ask it to show us just what's available here in Virginia. And so we can look through those. Um, as it turns out, the state 4-H horse and pony show is here at the very bottom of the list. We're going to click on that. And this is the welcome screen that you should see or the home page that you should see when you first enter the State 4-H Horse and Pony Show Fair Entry System. Please make sure that you take time to read the information that's here on the left hand side of the page. It has some very important reminders, things like you can only enter one equitation class, one showmanship, one trail and one side saddle class per horse. You're gonna choose your primary department for each of the horses that you're bringing to the state show. Those primary departments being dressage, English pleasure, Gymkhana, hunter over fences and under saddle, the hunter pleasure division, miniature ranch, and our adaptive rider and handler. So just read through all of this information. If at any point you have questions, Sandy's phone number and email, as well as my phone number or an email are there, and we can help you navigate the fair entry system work through it um, and hopefully answer any questions that you may have. It goes over the fact that we do not accept credit card payment, but that payment must be made via check. We do ask that clubs, whenever possible, send us one check for all of the entries from their club. That helps us on our end. It talks a little bit about the additional classes option that we have offered this year. So additional classes outside of your primary division or what we will refer to as our cross division entries are available this year for $20 per class. You will be asked early in the entry system how many of those cross division classes you plan to enter. So that is another piece of information that you'll want to have as you get ready to go into the fair entry system. A quick note, the jumper class this year is an additional $20. It is considered one of those cross division classes. So if you plan to enter the jumper class, make sure that you put at least one for your answer to how many cross division entries you plan to make. Again, goes through the information, tells you where to send those checks. As we get ready to enter the system, a handful of things that you're gonna wanna have on hand. Make sure that you know the date and location of your qualifying clinic or show. Uh, make sure that if you plan to enter the jumper class that you have a digital form of your jumper qualifying form, the same for your trail qualifying form if you plan to enter the trail class, because you will be asked to upload those. So it's pretty simple to get in. You're going to click on this green button that says sign in with 4-H online. You do need to have the email and the password that you use whenever you go into the 4-H online system. That's what's going to get you into fair entry. So we're going to click this here. And we're going to see if it remembers me. Yeah, I've been in here a couple times. Yay, okay. So this is what the welcome screen is going to look like. Um, it tells you that you've made it inside, okay? 
Um, and so, so far, so good, but we also haven't registered anything yet, okay? So there is nothing there uh, that we've registered. You can either go to the dashboard or you can begin registration, either one. Either one of those will take you to, to the step where you need to be. We'll go to the dashboard and I'll show you what that looks like because there's some interesting information here. Registration's open. That means that we can go in and we can start making those entries. It tells me that I don't have a current invoice, but I can begin work on a new one. If I have any completed invoices, it would show those here. And it also shows any entries or exhibitors that have been approved. So we're gonna begin work on a new invoice. A little reminder as you navigate your way through Fair Entry, anything that is a bright green is an action button. It's something that you can push um, that will take you to the next step. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So what do we want to do here? Well, we want to register an exhibitor. And I wanna point out these three bars, so exhibitors, entries, and payment. If we have successfully done everything we needed to, all three of these are green by the time we reach the end of the system. So we're working in the exhibitor section. We want to register an exhibitor because we wanna start and we're gonna do an individual. This isn't a team event. And what you'll see here is you see that I have, I have two um, children in my family, if you will, that are 4-H members. So if you are in a family that has multiple youth that are enrolled and approved in 4-H, then you're going to see all of those names there. We're only going to work with one at a time. And actually for this particular one, my horse type girl um, is not showing this year, so she doesn't have anything declared. So we're going to go with horse type baby, and we are going to continue Real quick, we never want to create an exhibitor from scratch. And the reason for that is that all of the exhibitors at the State Horse Show have to be enrolled eligible 4-H members. So their entry, their information should already be in the system. If you get to this box and the child in your family that you are looking for or planning to enter is not here, you need to stop and you need to reach out to Sandy or myself so that we can find out what's going on and why you, that child is not listed because what you will see here is everybody who is an, who is an approved enrolled 4-H member in your family. So we're gonna continue, all right? And we've got some questions that we need to answer and you'll have to answer these questions for each one of the children in your family that you are entering for the state show. So your 4-H club leader's email address. This is important because this is gonna allow us to be able to share your entries with your club leader so that they can see and verify that you have in fact entered the correct ones and make any of those changes that need to be made prior to coming to the show. Um, do we want to pre-purchase a printed copy of the program? And yep, I want, I like to have one to read, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna order that. I have passed skills tests one and two, so I'm gonna check those. Again, you'll see some of these questions are required and some are not. Your club leader email address is required. It's not required that you buy a program or that you input anything there. Skills, le uh, skills test levels is required. How many horses? Now, each um, participant can, can enter a maximum of two horses unless you are a junior rider who's entering the state show for the first time or you are a walk trot rider. Um, I'm going to enter two horses because I want to be able to show you what that process looks like. The primary division that I am going to enter for horse number one, um, we're going to put horse number one, whoops, not a miniature, um, in Hunter Over Fences. And again, there is that drop down um, that contains all of the choices that you have for each one of those. After we have indicated our primary division for horse number one, that's going to be the opportunity where we are going to want to indicate whether or not we plan to participate in any of those cross division classes. So anything outside of our primary division, which includes our showmanship, our equitation, our trail, and up to three miscellaneous classes. And those jumper classes are also those cross divisions. So I'm gonna enter one um, cross division class because I'm gonna put um, horse number one in the jumper class. So I've indicated that there. I need to put the date and the location of the qualifying show. So um, we'll just pick one. We'll go to Rose's show on May the 21st. So then we're going to start asking questions about horse number two. Now those horse number one questions are required because we need to capture that information. Number two is not required because not everybody is going to have a second horse. But for this one, we do. And this is going to be a Hunter Pleasure Pony. Um, and we are also, we're going to... Um, 
enter one cross division class for that particular horse. Uh, the qualifying event, we took both of our horses to Ms. Rose's show on May the 21st. Early arrival, I am going to go ahead and take both of those horses early. So I'm there and set up and ready to go. That's $30 a piece. It showed me that I'm going to owe 60 for that. I am going to get an additional tax stall. Now remember, you get one automatically with your registration that you'll share with up to three other club members. But since I've got two horses and a large family, I'm going to go ahead and get one for myself. Um, I am not participating in the Horse Show Hero Incentive, so I'm going to click there. I'm not a final year senior, so I don't need to answer this one and it's not required. Um, but if I am a final, final year senior, we're going to ask that you uh, click this link and that you go ahead and upload that senior stampede narrative for us. And that way we have it to go ahead and begin work on those. My educational contest, now this doesn't enter me, but it does allow us to capture the information as show managers and be able to begin preparing. I'm going to participate or plan to participate in hippology and horse judging. And so I can show you what happens when you don't answer those required classes. The, cl the question about the drill team is required. I'm going to leave it blank and hit continue. And what you'll see is it immediately stops me and I get this red lettering that tells me that I need to answer this question, that it is a required answer. I'm not going to participate in the drill team, so we'll do that. Click continue. And a lot of people get here and they're like, it's, it keeps showing me the questions. Well, what it's doing is it's asking you to verify them. So we can go up here. We're going to make sure that our first name, last name, birth date's all the same. Now you'll notice that the green boxes here are kind of faded out. We can't change those because that information is imported in from 4-H online. We can change our address if that's incorrect or has changed since we put this information in, but the personal details, the contact information all has to be changed directly in 4-H online. Read down through this information, make sure that it's correct, that you've entered everything just like you want it to. If you see a question that you answered incorrectly or that you need to change, you can hit that edit button and it will reopen those questions for you and you can go in and make those changes. I think everything looks okay. So I'm going to go up here. I want to continue to entries. Now here is lots of times where we find folks get hung up with fair entry. They will hit that continue to payment button and think they're done because they've put this information in and they should be good to go. But one thing I want to remind you is at this point, the only thing we've done is we've put the exhibitor's name, we've put all of that information in, but we don't know anything about the horse or horses or the classes that you want to enter. So we're going to click add an entry. We want to make sure that we get those entries in. And when we do that, it is going to show you all of the departments and divisions that are now available for you to enter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my equitation class out of the way first. And I'm going to do equitation over fences with this particular horse. Now what you see here is it will allow you to change. So if you by mistake um, clicked the wrong division or the wrong department, then you can click here and you can select that and you can change it. So let's say I, I, I want to do something other than equitation over fences. I can change that and it will take me right back to that same selection again and I can, I can choose another one. Again, we're going to use that green choose button and it takes us to this page where we are going to add our horse and we're also going to choose our classes. Now, because the information is imported from 4-H online, your club information should be correct. If for some reason it's not, then you can hit change and it will allow you to search for a new club. But again, it should be, it should be correct because it's importing it directly from 4-H online. We need to add an animal, okay? These are the allowed animal types for the classes that I'm looking at right now. We wanna make sure that that enter a single animal button is selected and it should be, okay? Because that is the default. We wanna hit add an animal and this is how we're gonna pull in that horse. And it's gonna show us that these are the horses that have been declared. So our baby horse type, she has entered two horses or declared two horses, excuse me. She has declared and has approved two horses. Our girl horse type, who's not gonna show at the state show, she has declared only one horse, all right? So if you get to this screen and there are no horses there for you to choose from, that's another, that's another one of those times when you need to stop and you need to reach out to Sandy or myself so we can do some investigation and find out. 
It may mean that your agent has not approved your horses or that there was an issue and you didn't get the communication about that. But again, the horses that you declared and have been approved should be here. So if they're not there or if they're incorrect, that's a stop and call one of us situation. So I'm gonna start with today's the day and I'm gonna import that horse. Okay, and it's gonna, it's gonna show me that horse right down there. Now, what I recommend is that you import these horses one at a time and you do your entries for each one of them individually. It will allow you to import both of them, but when they're both down there, that just increases the chance that you might select the wrong horse for the wrong class. So we've got today's today listed and I am a junior rider and I'm going to do equitation over fences with this horse. Okay, so that looks good. We're going to continue. It's going to give me the opportunity to review everything to make sure that I'm in equitation, that I want to be in equitation over fences and that this is the right horse. Today's the day and that the class I've chosen is equitation over fences with a horse for a junior rider. And I'm gonna create those entries. All right. So the only thing that I currently have entered for that particular horse is equitation. So I'm gonna go and I am going to continue to add an entry for each class that I want to enter that particular horse in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my showmanship and I'm gonna do hunter showmanship in hand. Again, verify, gonna click that. That same one before, we don't need to do anything to the club because that's good. Today's the day is the horse I'm looking for and I'm gonna do junior showmanship. I'm gonna create those entries after I've reviewed them. And I am gonna continue to do this for every class that I want to enter this particular horse in. This horse is going to be my hunter over fences horse. So I am going to do regular hunter horses. Check my horse again. I'm gonna do course A, course B, and I'm gonna do that under saddle class, okay? And then if you'll remember, I signed up for one of those cross division classes for this particular horse, and that's going to be the jumper class. So I'm going to go here and pick jumpers. And I'm going to do junior jumpers. Oh. Now, if you notice, I forgot to select the horse. So let's see what happens. It's telling me that an animal is required. So I entered a class, but I didn't put an animal in. Okay, so I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna mark that. So there's really a lot of stop gaps in here to keep you from doing things that you shouldn't do. All right, now if you'll notice when I put that one in, it's telling me that I need to review or complete outstanding records, that something is not quite right. So I'm gonna open that and see what the case is. I need to upload that jumper form, okay? So this is why you need to have a digital copy of that. I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna just upload a picture just so um, it'll upload something, but you're gonna wanna upload a digital copy of that um, jumper form. And when I do that, everything looks good. Now here we can do a couple things. It is assuming that I'm finished. I can go back because this is lit green now. I can go up here and it will let me look at the entries that I made for that particular horse once again, all right? Now, I'm not done because remember this particular, we've got two horses. So because I have a, a second horse, I am gonna go here and I am going to add an entry. However, if baby horse type only had one horse and we were done, but her sister also had a horse, then we would go here and we would register another exhibitor. It is extremely important that if you have more than one child in the family that is going to be participating at the state show, that you register them at the same time before you submit these entries. What happens when you submit them is your account is locked until we go through them and we approve them. So you can't get back in and you can't add that second exhibitor. You can't register little sister until we've approved them and unlocked your account. So a couple things to remember here. 
if we're done with this particular child and we've entered all the horses, all the classes for them, but we have another child, we wanna register another exhibitor and go through the same process that we just went through. If we have a second horse for this particular exhibitor, then we're going to go back and we're gonna add an entry. Now we're gonna to go to equitation again. And this one is gonna be Western horsemanship. And we need to add an animal, right? Because that second animal is not there. So we can't import today's the day because today's the day is already imported. So this time we're gonna grab, he's a salty nickel. Now you can, when we, when we imported today's the day, we could have selected both of those and imported both of them if we wanted to. You can do that. You just have to make sure that you are selecting the correct horse when you go through and you make those entries. So I'm a junior rider for my Western horsemanship. And I selected he's a salty nickel. I'm gonna verify that everything is correct. Okay want to do my showmanship for He's a Salty Nickel, and that's gonna be my Western showmanship. Again, I've gotta go down here and select him, Junior Western Showmanship. Okay. I'm gonna to continue to do that for every class that I want to enter this particular horse in. I'm gonna do Western Pleasure. I'm gonna do Western Pleasure first go, Western Pleasure second go for He's a Salty Nickel. Now to show you another one of the, the stop gaps that, that is in here, um, I'm gonna to go to the miniature division and I'm going to try, we'll say that this is my cross division class, okay? And I'm going to do um, a miniature hunter class. Now, what do you see? My, my horse choices disappeared. And the reason is because it says I do not currently have any eligible animals. My today's the day is a large horse. And my he's a salty nickel is a large pony. So neither one of those qualify for that miniature class. So what happens is it tells me that, that I can't do this, that this won't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and, oh, no wonder it won't work. I'm in the miniature division. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to change this. I'm going to go to miscellaneous and I'm going to add a jumper class. And I'm going to do that junior jumper class. I forgot to hit continue. Oh, I didn't select my, it tried to tell me I didn't select my horse. So I'll go back down here to he's a salty nickel. So if it won't let you proceed, look for the messages on the screen because you've done something that's not quite right and it doesn't want you to go any further. There's that outstanding records again. So um, I should have taken the opportunity to enter that one in a trail class to show you that you also would have to upload those trail forms. Again, I'm just uploading pictures just to to move us along. So I'm done with both horses. Um, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna look um, and I can see that for he's a salty nickel, I've got him in a jumper class, the two goes in Western Pleasure, my junior Western Showmanship and my junior, right, my junior um, Western Horsemanship class. And then down here I have today's the day um, with all the classes. So that looks good to me and I feel good about that. Again, this is another opportunity time to register that other child in the family. If there's another one that's going to be showing, um, click add an entry if we want to add any more or if we're done and we've added everything that we need to add for every child in the family and for all the horses that we're bringing, then I can continue to payment. Now, if you will notice, we've got a running total that's been accumulating here in the right-hand corner. So you'll be able to see as you go what that entry fee looks like. And once we get to move to payment, we're going to get a summary of that. So we've got one child, their total is $585. If we had an additional child here, it would list both of them, each of their individual totals and then a cumulative total. Always go to this detail button because that will give you a detail of exactly what you're being charged. 
So I've got two horses coming in for early arrival at $30 a piece. So there's my $60 for that. I'm entering two horses and they're $200 a piece. So there's the 400. I entered one cross division class for horse number one. That was my jumper class. I entered one cross division class for horse number two. I did decide that I wanted to purchase a pre-printed copy or pre-purchase a printed copy of the program. And I wanted that extra tax stall. So that is where my $585 is coming from. Right below those, you'll see a list of all of the classes that you've entered. So again, one more chance for you to review those classes and make sure that you have signed up for the classes that you want to be in and you have the horses signed up for the classes you want them to be in. This looks good to me, so I'm gonna hit continue. This gives you the payment instructions. It tells you how to make your checkout. It tells you how we would like you to handle it and if possible to have those clubs send just one check for full payment for everybody in their club. And it gives you one last time where that check is going to be sent to. You can screenshot this if you will or take a picture of it with your phone so that you know exactly where that's gonna go. Now, lots of times we have folks, they get here and they think they're done and so they just stop. What happens is that then leaves this invoice open and it does not push it across to us for approval. So you wanna make sure again, we've got that continue button so it wants us to use it. We have one last step and this is where we're gonna do that final submission. Shows us our total one more time, gives us those final instructions for how to pay. And this is that submit button that we're looking for. When we submit that, it pushes it across for the approval process to Sandy and Jennifer and myself. And it lets you know that you've been that you've completed this part of the process. Now, once you do this, you will receive an email from Fair Entry that tells you that your entries have been received. Remember that there is a difference between having them received and having them approved. Once we have gone through and we have looked at those entries and everything looks right and we feel comfortable that you are registered for exactly what you should be registered for, then we hit approve and you'll get another email from Fair Entry that says those entries have been approved. If we look at your entries and there's something wrong and we feel like some adjustments need to be made, you may get an email that says that your entries have been returned or rejected. It's not bad. It just means that it is reopening that account so you can go back in and make those choices. And there will also be information in that email from Fair Entry that lists the issues that we found and the things that you need to correct. So again, that walks you through the system. Um, the bottom line, if you have any questions as you move through this and as you navigate the system and get ready to submit your entries for the State Horse Show, make sure that you reach out to Sandy or myself or Jennifer and we'll be happy to help you. Screenshots are wonderful. So if you get stuck somewhere, if you can take a screenshot either with your phone or on your computer and email that to us, it gives us a visual of where you are and where you got hung up and we can help you work through that as well. So good luck to each of you. We hope that everything goes smoothly. Uh, this entry system we think is going to work really well and we're excited about being able to capture all this information um, and turn it around rather quickly once we get close to showtime. So have a good evening and if you have any questions, give us a call.